everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are talking to Stephanie James, and she is talking about her book, The Spark, Igniting Your Best Life. Please hold your beautiful book up. Thank you, CJ. Uh, lovely. So we were talking about in the previous segment in part one about um, one of the sparks in her life and how she was told to stop trying, stop striving, stop trying to be so lovable, looking good, achieve, achieving, accomplishing so much. Um, so you had this wonderful insight and stop trying. Um, and then what happened after that? How did your life shift and what, what kinds of things that you do to excavate that spark that was in you. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like we, we are so programmed with these external programs for happiness and, and from a very young age, you know, and we see it in our media, you know, we just we're, we're inundated with these images of drink this and you'll be happy or, you know, wear this right outfit and then you'll be happy. And, you know, we can only be happy if we're in relationship. And so, you know, and, and I think that while those things can cause the emotion of happiness, that's very fleeting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I had to learn is that happiness, truly loving ourselves, it's, it's an inside job. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't earn it outside of us because if we don't believe it, we reject it anyway. We reject a form of it, or we think the person's lying or they can't really see us. We get that, you know, imposter syndrome going. Like if they only really knew me. Right. And, you know, I agree with you, what you said before the break of it's not that easy, you know, again, being in the professional development or excuse me, personal development and mental health field for 32 years, I know just, you know, oh, be your own best friend, just love yourself. It's not that easy. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we really have to work on. Like, how do we cultivate this friendship with ourselves? Mm -hmm. You know, and so part of, you know, what I had to learn and, and the ironic piece at this time is I, at the time that all happened, where I got the message, I had this card framed by my bedside that said all the strength, all the wisdom and all the beauty that you were seeking are right there inside of you. Hmm. And I just, you know, the, the irony of, wow, I should have really <laughs> read the card. <laughs> I subconsciously saw it every day. But so I, I think what starts helping and, and changing this dynamic for us is truly learning the art of befriending ourselves because it has to start there. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the ways I think we can do that, CJ, is when we start becoming priority in our own lives. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't mean be selfish. You know, this isn't about... Um, I'm going to take care of myself at the neglect of others. Mm -hmm. It's that I'm going to take care of myself and make that a priority in my day. Mm -hmm. Because when I show up for me and I've, you know, I'm giving myself the message, I've got my own back. I actually start trusting myself to mm. show up. Mm. I start trusting myself, you know, that I'm going to do this self-care and that's what builds the relationship. And I, you know, and I really compare it to like, if we just met someone new, if we just met a new person, we wouldn't right away be like, okay, here's all my deepest, darkest secrets. Now start picking up my child at daycare. Right. Would you do that? You know, we, we're just not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to cultivate and build a relationship of trust with that person. Well, it's no different with ourselves. You know, oftentimes, you know, we can all think of times we've let ourselves down or betrayed ourselves or said yes when we really meant no, um, committed to things to ourselves that we broke. And so you can really begin with just doing, like I always say a 21 to 30 day, it used to be 30 days for something to become a habit. And right. now it says, you know, 21 is the latest research. So 21 to 30 days of showing up for you. You know, I, I think we all also have this inner rebel. And if we say, okay, from now into eternity, I have to do this new behavior. The inner rebel's like, hell no, I'm not going to do Yeah, that. no one can sustain that. No this one can sustain it. But most of us can commit to 21 to 30 days. Okay, I'm going to practice what this feels like to show up for myself. And, and how I really invite people to do that is to have a morning practice. Mm -hmm. And when you're first starting this, do it for half an hour. It doesn't have to be, oh my God, I have to plan the first two hours of my day. No, it's half an hour. 
-hmm. do things that nurture your soul. You know, it might be 10 minutes of exercise, 10 minutes of mindfulness or guided meditation, and then 10 minutes of writing out your gratitudes. Mm -hmm. It's literally like priming your heart, mind, body, and soul for the day ahead. Mm -hmm. And then no matter what challenges we face or what's ahead, we have some resourcefulness. We've yeah. got this resiliency, right? That we're also cultivating. Yeah, I completely agree. It's, fu it's funny because I, um, I talk to my clients. I'm like, what do you love doing? I hate my corporate job, but I really love doing art. And so I was like, and I love doing yoga. I'm like, so start your morning off. And it's, it's amazing how, when you do put those things that are most important to you, yoga or drawing or art or some type of creative expression, she's been doing that for, and she's like, I had no idea. Like it made such a huge difference in my life. And, um, you know, it, it is priming your day so that you're in a better place. And it's funny because you mentioned that I was thinking this morning, I woke up and my morning process is that I do a, a mindfulness kind of meditation. And I woke up and I thought, my mind is a mess this morning. I can't focus to save my life. My concentration was awful. And I thought, okay, well, you beat yourself up about this or you could say, wow, that's a piece of information. What am I going to do with this? You know, my guess seems like my mind is kind of not restful right now. Okay. You know, so even when you don't have a great yoga session or you don't have a good workout session, you know, I had another workout session where the other day where I'm like, I can't lift the same weights that I did last week. And it's like, yeah, sometimes that happens. <laughs> and to just love yourself Anyways, and um, I want to go back to the thing we were talking also at the end of the first segment, when, when you realized that it was an inside game, and you started really befriending yourself, um, how did it help you shine the love that was inside of you more? Well, I think part of it was really, I mean, I, I had to really look at some of my limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm that were going on, if I had a lot of excavation to do, right? As mm. I think we all do. And we have so many of these subconscious beliefs that are inside of us that are kind of ruling our lives and we don't even realize we're having them. Mm. And so I think one of the even deeper turning points for me was when I was taking this class, it was an online course about the reticular activating system of the brain. Mm -hmm. and, and that's you know the part that notices things. Mm -hmm. So for example, like when my daughter was pregnant, she's like, mom, everybody's pregnant. And I just, yeah. you know, I just laughed. I'm like, everybody's not pregnant, but that part of her brain, right. because she was experiencing it, noticed it, started seeing right. it everywhere. So when, when I did this, you know, um, I was trying to think to myself, well, what is a belief I really want to change? And this was really one of the life transforming things for me. Um, because I'd always been very, very driven. I put myself through grad school as a single mom. I'm the oldest kid in my family. Wow. And oftentimes just the hub when there's crisis, you know, mm. I'm, I'm the person on the phone, I'm the go-to. Right. And so, you know, it was really, I was like, well, I, I'm trying to think of what is a limiting belief because it felt like there was something underneath that that was also driving that behavior. Mm -hmm. And when I really started digging into it, I realized, oh my gosh, that behavior actually comes from a limiting belief that I had when my parents went through that divorce. Mm. And it's that nobody's there for me. I have to do it all myself. Mm. So part of that being driven was really, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. Mm. And so on this course that I took, I loved this exercise and I have it in the book because I think this is just genius. Again, it's this 21 to 30 day where you're writing every night a journal entry. And she said, you need to write to one thing that you want to instill in your belief system. Mm -hmm. Now you're not gonna believe it today because you're going against all this pre-programming that's already hardwired neurologically. So you have to say, okay, what do I wanna believe? And she goes, I want you to blow it up big. So mm -hmm. when it shows up, you really know it. Mm -hmm. So what I would write to, and so every day, and I did it for 30 days, you write the same affirmation and then all the evidence that showed up during the day mm -hmm. to support it. So my affirmation was the universe completely loves and supports me. Mm. 
because I had gone through great portions of my life where I felt like I have to do this on my own. Nobody's there for mm-hmm. me. No one's doing this for me. Super independent, super driven person. So what was interesting is right away, I started noticing like, wow, I get so many wonderful texts from my girlfriends, mm-hmm. you know, that are like, Hey, sweet friend, love you. Thinking of you, just sending you, you know, love and warm wishes and light. And I was like, wow, you know, I, I knew that was happening, but I just wasn't attuned to right. it. Yeah. And then pretty soon it was like, uh, I think it was that first week twice. I used to always go to the same coffee house mm-hmm. on the way to work. Mm-hmm. And in the same week, two different baristas gave me two free cups of coffee. Nice. Like, we just love you. You know, it's just so nice when you come in and you're so upbeat or whatever, you know, and it was just like, that's really sweet. And it was just little things like people letting me cut in online at the grocery store and you know, just little bitty things showing up. But the mm-hmm. second weekend, something happened, CJ, that like blew this belief system out of the water. And my daughter, Haley and I had gone to Estes Park, which is up here in Colorado yeah, beautiful. for the yeah. day and came back and our little 1940s bungalow that I had just bought and spent most of my savings at the time remodeling, I had the basement had flooded. The really old water heater had rusted out at the bottom. And so there was all this standing water and I go outside, it's like 4.30 in the afternoon and the neighbors are out working on their yards. And I just like, I don't know what to do. And I start talking to one and pretty soon the other one comes over. And pretty soon, CJ, I have all these people with shop backs and fans and all these people helping. And then there's a knock on the door. And my, I had a girlfriend who lived about four houses down with her husband. And she saw all the commotion, people coming in and out of the house. She's like, what's going on? And I tell her, she comes back 15 minutes later and hands me a thousand dollar check. Oh my God. And she's like, I know you can't afford this right now. Mm -hmm because you spent all this money remodeling this house, but you and your daughter need hot water tomorrow morning for work and school. And my husband has a truck. So let's go pick something out for you. Wow. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Okay. So the universe does only, support me. <laughs> yeah, The universe is super supporting me. And what was so interesting, CJ, is that I always had kind of held my mom about arm's length. I mean, I loved her dearly always, but I just wasn't as close to her. I didn't depend on her. Mm-hmm. And that shifted my ability to open up and be able to get help from her or say, I'm not doing well today. Or, mm. you know, could you come up and help me with this? And that is what turned our our relationship into this, what we have today, which is this amazing best friendship. And it changed my relationship with my girlfriends um, where they were saying, wow, you know, you really let us in. You know, it's so nice to be able to show up for you because you always showed up for us. Mm, wow. So wow. yeah, really, really, I mean, these things we think, oh, you know, no big deal. It's just one belief. But the trickle down effect or the concentric circles that came out from that were huge and brought so much more love into, into my life. And I feel like the other thing I want to say, CJ, before we take a break is the thing of, you know, this is a continual process. There's no just one moment that we arrive. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think about my partner now and he and I have this like amazing connected relationship. I couldn't have had it 20 years ago. I couldn't have had it 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But because I've kept growing in that relationship, that friendship and love with myself, I can finally be at a really deep level of the, you know, having the ability to receive love. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. Right? So it's, it's not over. So for you, it was about re- recognizing and receiving the love that was already there, but that somehow you weren't feeling. And it sounds like once you befriended yourself, you start seeing it actually being reflected back to you. Oh, Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely. And that's just it. I didn't need the outer love to feel loved as I cultivated that self-love it just opened up and was more apparent. Mm. It was always there. And I think that's the thing about, as you do that exercise with the reticular activa- activating system, you know, my, my experience in doing this with my coaching clients is they find, wow, so much of this was already here. 
Right. I just you're just not, you, yeah, you're not paying it. attention to it. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Okay. And in the next segment, I want to talk to you about finding your voice and reinventing yourself. Um, awesome. We've been talking to Stephanie James about her book, The Spark, Igniting Your Best Life. Please hold it up again. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Okay. 